At 10 feet high and comprised of roughly 2,000 paper mache bricks, the Spirit Wall is a collaborative art project between North Dakota artist Terry Gelsing and the members of the Spirit Lake Nation at Fort Totten. Within each brick of the wall are the hopes, dreams, memories, songs, and drawings of the people who created them. When I've got colored paper, I can kind of drape it over the sides like that. I add a little bit more, and I start to fill up the mold. Do it. Go ahead. Tip it upside down. Lift up. Pinch it. Drop it. Very good. I think the connection between art and life for uh, people on the reservation is less distinguishable than it is maybe for the white cultures that, that surround it. We often think of art as a commodity and I think that from ancient times forward people in indigenous communities have thought about art uh, simply as an exercise in everyday life. The North Dakota Museum of Art received a grant to host a collaboration project between people of the Spirit Lake Nation and at least six artists. I was fortunate to be one of them. And so the wall itself is like the community, but the brick is like the individual, like all of you are individuals. So when you take all of these bricks, which are like all of you, and you put them in a wall, it's a pretty strong wall, wouldn't you say? Yeah. When I started to think about the reservation and what the reservation uh, meant, I thought of the wall as a metaphor that really sums up for me the idea of, of how uh, we perceive the reservation. We perceiving meaning the culture that is not a part of that. And so I wanted to get on the inside and find a way or a process in which the people of Spirit Lake could show some of their work as being part of that. The Spirit Bricks are bricks that was an increment that many people could make. I encourage them to write prayers, stories, names of people, uh, memories of people, draw pictures from the very young to the very old, and they would tear this paper up and put it into the paper vats that I had before the bricks were actually cast. I think for folks who have participated in the project to see their bricks become part of a stronger whole is something that I wanted to accomplish um, as an artist. And so my part in it is really an arranger, um, a designer of processes, a way of bringing people together. When I think about the bricks themselves, we're looking at right around 2,000 efforts, 2,000 people being involved in, in what this is about. Brick making's a hard job, but somebody's got to do it. All of these bricks are made of different things. There's lawnmower grass mixed in with them. Those are the kind of the browner ones because they're organic surfaces. There's uh, papers that were generated on the reservation. I think every secretary between Rugby and Devil's Lake has been saving paper for me for over a year. There's uh, deer hair in them. There's probably some blood in them from hunting season. So all of these bricks get ritualized with the time of our life. Even though I'm using non-traditional materials, it, it does sort of work like traditional bricklaying materials. This is what a bricklayer would probably call backfilling. This stuff sets up fairly quickly, so I don't have a whole lot of time to deal with it. So I've pre-planned where the bricks are gonna go. And the first thing I do is just simply lay them up and get the surface kind of connected on all sides. Because they're relatively the same width, they're not always the same height. And so the kind of odd shape, it's uh, kind of responding to each one separately as you're putting them together because they're different. Okay, once I have that part of it done, I have to shim these because if you notice, they all tend to fall down. And I'm simply using just different pieces of foam core, different types of foam core paper. And I'll get these up to a certain level. The material is relatively strong when these bricks dry completely. They're almost like solid pieces of plywood. And so 
um, if you think of the weight of this as being, you know, the end grain of telephone books piled up on top of another, you can imagine how, how heavy these sections are. Probably 75% of the bricks have been made by people on the Spirit Lake Nation. So the idea of collaboration is to extend out as far into the uh, community as possible and try to get as many per people to participate. Well, I taught at Rugby High School for several years. The welding instructor, Bruce Ganarelli, has been doing some wonderful things with kids there and uh, wanted to give them a chance to be collaborators too. What we designed is a bracket system uh, to go on each side of the wall and then bolt all the way through it. It's good that kids get to do these different types of projects, but also a project like this that reaches out beyond the community and into the state. The North Dakota Museum of Art has been a great leader in the state of North Dakota and has certainly promoted projects like this that create opportunities in rural areas. And I think the benefit is yet to be realized in terms of, of how social art projects can affect the culture of North Dakota as well as what we think about art and our lives as individuals. Prairie Mosaic is funded by the Minnesota Arts and Cultural Heritage Fund with money from the vote of the people of Minnesota on November 4, 2008. The North Dakota Council on the Arts and by the members of Prairie Public.